Ladies and gentlemen, TikTok is going to be banned in US. What does that mean for all of us? Now, there's going to be implication for investors of S&P 500 and NASDAQ. So watch to the end, you see me build up the story, okay? A lot of you are watching the development of the TikTok saga where the US House of Representatives has just voted to ban TikTok or get them by divested. So a lot of you are asking, is this fair or not fair to TikTok, right? Especially when the CEO is a Singaporean. He's a great guy. And out of this whole saga, actually who wins, who loses, Who's happy and who's not happy? And what's most importantly, the implications to investors uh, of NASDAQ and the S&P 500. So all this I'm going to explain in a short while. Okay, just watch on. So the House of Representatives have just passed the bill to ban TikTok. And this is what we need to know. This is the sequence of events that led to it. Actually started a long time ago, okay? In 2020, uh, when Donald Trump tried to force the sale of TikTok through an executive order. Well, he, he acted on it because the FBI said that TikTok could pose a national security risk to US and China may be able to conduct influence operation to the app. And I'll describe that in more detail later. So in response to this, TikTok conduct a operation called Project uh, Texas, where they farm out all the US data into a US server with Oracle getting involved to vet through the algorithm and the process of content moderation. Well, that doesn't really help, right? Because uh, in 2023, uh, you know, President Biden took more steps to regulate TikTok and ban the app from federal devices. That means government mobile phones cannot have TikTok. But the strange thing is that Biden himself uses TikTok to conduct his, his campaign to get more voters, they are younger ones. So anyway, so this is uh, Biden, right? There is a first congressional testimony where TikTok CEO uh, appeared before the Congress and get interrogated by so many people. And we watched some of these videos before. Uh, following which, you know, there was a first US state to sign a legislation to ban TikTok, but it was blocked by the federal judge. And following that, there was the most recent one. We all take sympathy and take pride in uh, Chu Sozi, a uh, second grilling before the Congress. And all this keep developing into a, into a high, high temperature uh, situation. Just yesterday, the bill was passed to ban TikTok at the House of Representatives. So next, they have to go to the Senate. And then if the Senate passes it, it goes to the President. And the President have already said that he will sign the bill uh, if it comes to his desk. From that day onwards, TikTok have, have six months to break ties with ByteDance. Okay? Uh, that means really be separated uh, from the parent company or they face a ban. And interestingly, the vote at the House of Representatives was pretty unanimous. Majority of people, almost all the people actually voted. You need to understand that there is the Democrats and Republicans and usually they don't see eye to eye on everything, right? From big policies, small policies to toilets, to, you know, whatever nitty-gritty, for the first time that I've seen, okay, in a long time, they actually are all aligned in one in one vote, telling everybody that, you know, telling everybody that both of them are actually working hand-in-hand hand to ban TikTok. So this surely shows the amount of angst and insecurity the Americans, uh, lawmakers have towards TikTok. I think the last time, this kind of show of support where both the Republicans and the Democrats, you think of it like, like PAT Workers Party, this kind of thing, right? Actually came together and worked hand in hand uh, to, ban, uh, to ban or to, to vote for something uh, together um, would have been like World War II or, or War on Terror or something like that. You know, that kind of, that kind of uh, support. So anyway, so this, this one is a, is a unanimous vote. A lot of people are asking, actually, Mr. Lu, what are they so frightened about? You know, what's the big deal, right? We use TikTok, people are dancing, people are singing songs, people are doing stupid things, you know, people, you know, uh, you know, talking about general knowledge and things like that, right? What is so big deal about TikTok? So the US lawmakers are afraid of two risks. The first risk is what we call a privacy risk. And to be frank, I don't think this is that big a risk. So basically, they are afraid that TikTok, especially through the connections with ByteDance, and then ByteDance has ch uh, Chinese uh, government, Chinese Communist Party influence on it, has the ability to take data from the American public. So users 
users of TikTok, which are 170 uh, million Americans, uh, would stand the risk of their data being taken by the communi uh, Chinese Communist Party. Things like, you know, where you are located, you know, what kind of interest you have, how rich are you or how poor are you, certain likes and dislikes or whatsoever, you know, that kind of information. To me, not so big a deal, right? It's so it's so what if uh, TikTok and I get my information that that know that I like to look at, you know, pretty girls dancing, you know, uh Chang Jiao Mei Mei or pretty pretty, you know, faces, that kind of thing. So so what's the big deal, right? Uh, I like to look at finance videos on TikTok, you know. I like to look at animals, cats video. Does that post a uh, personal data risk? I'm not too sure about that. Okay. But maybe I'm too I'm too shallow about it. Uh, I, I guess also most Singaporeans uh, don't really care about personal uh, data risk, uh, my, my guess. But the bigger risk is actually this. There is a influence risk, which is actually a much bigger risk. So think about it. Right now, because they have reached to 170 million people, which is half the population of US, they have the ability to use algorithms and influence and videos and content to influence what we call the narrative uh, towards the U.S. Uh, public. So this is actually what, what we call a control of news media, right? The ability to tell the U.S. public that, you know, what is right, what is wrong. You should be thinking this way. You should be voting for this candidate. You should be siding uh, China in this thing, you know, that kind of influence. And that kind of risk is a much higher risk. We call it influence risk. The the ability to tell the Americans in a huge numbers and able, able to effectively influence their thinking is a big risk, especially when the parent company is a Chinese company that has apparently Chinese communist influence. So I think that's a huge risk uh, to the, the US lawmakers. In response, TikTok tried to create operational segregation. Now, this is in contrast with, with what uh, structurally we call structural separation. So operational separation is basically, it's the same company, but I put in a China wall, right? A China wall to separate so that uh, party A do, within a company has no influence over party B. Uh, I've been in projects that require this kind of separation before uh, in my course of life, and it wasn't easy. To be frank, there's no foolproof when it comes to operational separation. So, but TikTok is grumbling that A, China or Chinese government or Chinese Communist Party has never asked for US data. They have never intervened in our business, right? Well, you know, to the US lawmakers, they say never doesn't mean you will never. First of all, they distrust uh, this whether this statement is true. And second, even if they trust, how on earth are they going to believe that the Chinese government will never do that to ByteDance or to TikTok? So it's not whether the CEO is convincing enough. It is the nature that operational separation is not foolproof and is not 100%. And to be fair, a lot of people, because the CEO is a Singaporean CEO, we like to cite TikTok. The second reason is that we love TikTok. TikTok is a wonderful app. You know, I use it uh, very often. Uh, young people and, and middle-aged people and even now old people also use TikTok and you find it very interesting. Uh, so there is an emotional connection now with an app and plus the fact that the CEO is a Singaporean. Many Singaporeans uh, and I would imagine even Malaysians uh, were actually side with TikTok. But we need to know one thing. China has never played fair to the rest of the world. I say again, China is not a fair regime. So you think about it, the Google, Netflix, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram are all banned in China. So if TikTok get banned in US, what's the big deal, right? That's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six apps gonna ban and the only uh, US only banned one. So what's the big deal, right? So we need to know that this kind of reciprocity is not uh, deemed to be unfair. If China is not being fair, then why should US be fair in this thing? And to be frank, uh, China has not been fair for, I don't know, gazillion years, man, 10, 15, 20 years. And now is the only time I heard that US government is going to ban a Chinese app in US. So what's the big deal, right? ByteDance 
the parent company of TikTok is now caught between what I call a devil and the deep blue sea. Well, it is not easy for them. For me, you no, know, sell, sell, you know, just get a good price out of it. So I think that, that's great, right? Monetize it. You know, the, the founders might be very happy. But you know what? It's not so easy. So this is the US government. They want TikTok to be divested from ByteDance. But the Chinese government is unlikely to approve the divestment. Why? Because there's face. You know, ni jiao wo mai wo jiu yao mai ya. In the kind of thing, yeah, if you ask me to sell, means I have to sell. I don't know what the h is this, right? So the the Chinese government may not allow ByteDance to divest TikTok. So one side is US government forcing it to divest. The other side say no. So, you know, ByteDance may be caught between the, the two governments and, you know, what the should I do kind of thing, right? So it is a... Uh, it is really a situation that is very difficult for the parent uh, of TikTok. So what are the options for bike dance? So essentially, there are two options right now. If this bill were to pass through, number one is bike dance have the option of selling TikTok within six months. And six months is not an easy time to sell such a big company. If they decide not to sell TikTok, they could face a ban uh, which all the app stores would have to remove the app, which is basically Google Play Store and uh, an Apple App Store. And that's basically the end of TikTok. So even if ByteDance managed to divest TikTok, they have to first determine whether it's no longer controlled by a foreign adversary. So I was wondering whether GIC or Tamasic should go in and buy TikTok. It's not cheap, but this could be potentially what I call a fire sale situation. So... If Tamasic were to own TikTok, that would be great for Singapore, right? Well, yeah, not so easy, not so easy. Well, it is not so easy because TikTok costs a lot of money. So TikTok, through some researcher, actually is worth in the tune of $85 billion. $85 billion, and that's a hell of money. During the Singapore circuit breaker, Singapore government actually tapped on our reserve and the amount of reserve tap is not even anywhere close to 85 billion US dollars. So in order for Singapore to make a bid to buy uh, bike dance, you know, I think it's a, it's a long shot. So very few takers for TikTok if TikTok is now on sale, unless it's on a fire sale, which I don't think uh, they will allow the situation to be in. So who will likely be the entities that can afford TikTok? Obviously, this would likely be the big companies like the Magnificent Seven, right? So we have Magnificent Seven will be the Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Amazon, you know, uh, Netflix of the world. So, so these Magnificent Seven company, I, I would take Tesla out. Tesla is a pretty, pretty on the decline. And by the way, I've managed to sell Tesla. Oh, that's a story for another day. So the Magnificent Seven type of companies will likely be the only few companies that can afford to buy TikTok. In US, there are antitrust law that makes it very difficult for these magnificent seven companies to be able to buy TikTok because they'll be absorbing around 160 to 170 million users and they'll be hit with anti-monopoly law because now their monopoly power will be very strong and none of them want to go into a situation like this. So who else can afford to buy this? I would imagine rich sovereign state funds, okay? Uh, I think the Norwegian funds or the, the, the oil-rich company sovereign funds or things like that. So a big private equity firms you know, maybe even have to pitch two or three together. I don't know, but it's really very difficult to find a company or a entity that has so much money they, that they can spend 85 billion US dollars to, to buy over TikTok. So someone's actually suggested that why don't you just set up uh, an entity that just buy over TikTok US and then leave the rest of TikTok to bite dance. I think that's rather difficult. Then TikTok USA will come into competition with the rest of the world's TikTok and the buyers of it will probably not be happy. And everybody likes a global app and not a, a geographically constrained app and things like that. So most likely, ByteDance, if they want to sell, they will sell the whole of TikTok. Most likely, ByteDance would sell TikTok as a whole in order to maximize the value of it. But that also makes it very difficult because the budget is very big uh, and the scale of complexity is very humongous as well. And there is a problem. 
the U.S. government is not going to give them a lot of time. They will have six months to do it. I've been in sale of company process before. Even very small company can take more than six months. So, you know, this is a mega size company. I think if we force it to be six months, it might hit a fire sale process. If this is an eventuality, then Bike Dance will actually start the sales process early. But if they start sales process early, then they they also signal to, to the Chinese government and the US government they are backing down. So they're caught again in the devil and deep blue sea, not easy for them. So out of this whole thing, who are the winners and who are the losers? Well, the interesting thing is this. There are actually quite a lot of winners, right? Very few losers in my humble opinion. So the first winner that I can think of is potentially bike dance. Although we say, oh, bike dance cannot you know, forced to sell and things like that. It all depends what's the price, right? Everything is the price. If they get a hell of money out of it, they don't really lose, right? So bike dance uh, will probably stand to gain 85, maybe even 90, 100 billion dollars in an extraordinary liquidity event. So they, they stand to be one of the biggest winner. Of course, they say it's not nice that, you know, we'll be forced in a fire sale situation. I don't necessarily think it's going to be a fire sale situation. A lot of companies... Uh, well, are going to be very interested uh, in bike dance. Well, if if the sale is not going to be effected and the ban were to happen, then Google and Facebook will stand to gain the most. Why is it so? Because you know a lot of the ad revenue that is now sitting with with TikTok will have to flow somewhere. So they most likely flow to Google and Facebook, and you know billions of dollars. Uh, you know will will on on an annual basis. Uh of ad revenue will come to them and they should have an uplift. If one of these companies managed to buy TikTok at a fair price, then it is possible that their share price will actually go up. And you know what? They are all component stocks of the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So in some sense, there's a small uplift to our S&P 500 and NASDAQ should this thing happen. So maybe as investors of S&P 500 and NASDAQ, we'll stand to gain a little bit from it. So the last thing is that the investors of ByteDance, which actually are quite a global spread of investors, if the liquidity event were to materialize, they will actually realize a lot of value as well. So I actually think the number of winners is actually a lot in this event. So who is going to be the losers? Well, regardless of the outcome, the Chinese government will likely lose face. And losing face for a government is actually a very big thing. So I think the biggest loser of this whole thing is the Chinese government. And to a lesser extent, US users of TikTok is going to get hit as well. Uh, we're told that there are 170 users. Of, of A lot of small, medium enterprise are using this. A lot of creators are using this. In, and if the ban were to materialize, then we have loss of income, you know, and they have to look for alternatives. And that's, uh, that's going to be a small hit. I don't think this, that's going to be that big an issue. I would actually think that, you know, even if the ban were to materialize, they will find an alternative somewhere. So if you look at this whole chart, I actually think that the number of winners is going to be a lot. And the number of losers are actually very few. So this is actually not necessarily that bad an outcome. But all said and done, the bill is not cast in stone. I already said, now the House of Representatives has passed uh, the, the bill. It now needs to go to the Senate and that process is take time. And the Senate has to you know, take a vote on it. Most likely, you will get passed through if it reached that day. Then it goes to the president. Now, TikTok is not going to sit there and just collect dust, right? They will, fire, they will likely file a legal challenge and they have the money to do so. And the U.S. courts takes a long time as well. And, you know, it, it, it really gets uh, dragged on for quite some time. Interestingly, the presidential election will be in November 2024. And if, if Donald Trump were to win it, he might go easy on TikTok because he actually hates Facebook. He deems TikTok as a competitor of Meta. Meta, which is a, with a parent company of Facebook, uh, is deemed as an enemy of the people by Donald Trump. So the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So I think he will be more soft towards TikTok and give them a lot more, cut them a lot more slack and give them a lot, a lot more leeway. But who knows, right? So I think in a nutshell, out of this whole TikTok saga, the good thing for us to know is that actually the number of winners is going to be a lot. Potentially even for small investors like us, either through the shares of 
of the, the potential competitors and buyers, you know, we are all going to stand from it. Uh, or when we take a, a stake in the S&P fund and NASDAQ as well. And on the other hand, the, the entities are going to be hurt, uh, going to be unrelated to investors like us and also the Chinese government, which is also unrelated to us. So in that sense, this is probably more interesting uh, as, a, as a media event. You know, we can take potato chips and watch the development and also potentially a small upside to us. So I think that you know this is interesting. We should watch the development closely and see how it goes on. So thanks for watching. Always remember to like and subscribe my YouTube channel. Uh, we will be posting videos almost every day to keep you updated and entertained and informed and educated with the latest financial events of the day. With this, thank you and I'll see you again in a day or two.